So a focus group, Fiona. Yeah. Um, now that's different from an individual interview, isn't it? Do you, yeah. uh, what, what do you think is especially different about a focus group? Well, the dynamic that you know people playing off each other is is a both a strength of the focus group and also a challenge of a focus group in the fact that you you get um, you know different nuances of opinion sometimes some quite opposing opinions as a moderator you need to be able to keep it flowing but between people that might not agree with everything but that gives you wonderful data as well so um, they can be quite vibrant and dynamic um, if handled well and it, a lot of it depends on the skill of the moderator but it's a great skill to learn and practice as part of a master's project I think. Yes I think probably it is more difficult working with a focus group just because you know there's more going on mm -hmm. more to keep track of and mm -hmm. the transcription can be very difficult as well. But so there's some tips aren't there that help with that? Well, some things, uh, people say that some things make it a little bit easier. Mm. Um, for example, going around the group to begin with, getting a, asking everyone to say a few words, perhaps to introduce themselves, so mm. that you can you know, um, pick up on their voice and, and uh, helps you to recognise who is speaking when you're listening back to the transcript. Mm -hmm. And I think if you've um, practised, if you've done a pilot one, then I think that really helps because you can then go into the real data collection knowing when you need to slow things down a little bit, when you might need to pause and perhaps take a minute to reflect the group consensus perhaps and then say, so what I'm hearing is that Margie and Pete are agreeing that um, X, Y, Z, but you know, Fred and Francis are, you know, find that difficult to get on board with because of ABC. Is that right? And then, you know, you might just need a little bit of time to bring it together and then send it out again. And if you've been through that transcription process, you really understand why you need that at times. Because if everything, everybody starts talking on top of each other and it starts snowballing, it can get quite tricky, can't it? Well, that's right. I think, mm -hmm. you know, very difficult to work with that data if everyone's talking at once. And mm -hmm. I think, you know, just as in an individual interview, you, one would like at the beginning to set the scene and, mm -hmm. you know, get the process started in a nice way. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's even more important for a focus group yeah. to do at the beginning a little bit of ground rules and ask everyone to, um, you know, to, to work with each other in mm -hmm. a considerate way mm -hmm. and uh, encourage people just to speak one at a time. Mm -hmm. Exactly, and I think it's important with any group dynamic to keep the topic in the middle, so to speak, that it's not that they're um, you know, disagreeing with each other necessarily as far as people butting heads, so to speak, but the, you're keeping the topic of conversation in the center and they're all contributing to it and bouncing off that. Does that make sense? I don't know if that makes sense. That they're not personally getting into um, you know, a battle of words, but it's like, well, let's bring it back to, to the focus of the topic. It's okay to disagree, it's okay to all agree, but that's what's in the center. Yeah, I think that's right, this idea of the center, because mm. um, you know, while you were talking, I was thinking about um, what, when would you do a focus group uh, rather than an individual interview? And I mm -hmm. suppose you know, perhaps it's something to do with um, being interested, having a research question that, that is more about shared understandings or mm -hmm. shared processes yeah. or group processes rather than any one individual's experience or perceptions or beliefs and so yeah, on. Yeah, I would agree. And I think also in practice, um, it's a tool that is used a lot in um, different health settings, getting a group of patients together to see what their experiences were like going through a certain system or um, working with a certain group, uh, going out into the community and doing focus groups about uh, you know, building a new hospital or whatever it might be. So if people are going into applied positions afterwards, this is a great skill to hone now. That's true, mm. yes. Um, skill that's well worth applying yeah. and well worth developing because it yeah. is used in lots of contexts, isn't it? Yeah, yes. it is. 
yeah. we were talking about ethics in relation to interviews. Now, the ethics um, in a focus group situation are mm. similar but subtly different. Um, um, for example, um, confidentiality. Now, yeah. if I'm if I'm interviewing you, Fiona, I can give you a cast iron assurance mm. that what you tell me I will treat as confidential. Yeah. But in a focus group, yeah. it's not just down to me, and so. Um, we all as a group have to understand that we should respect one another's confidentiality mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. treat what we hear in the group as uh, yeah. keep it in the group. And that's why I think it can be um, quite important to have the participants that might not necessarily know each other that well. Because if you're having um, a, uh, an already established clique, click, whatever you want to call it, or um, they know each other well, they live in the same street or what have you, and it's a quite a personal issue versus how's the traffic on your street affecting you or the pollution or what have you, that seems fine. But if it's quite an emotional issue, then that can be a little tricky, I think, ethically. Yes, that's right. There might be some subjects that people would prefer to talk about one-to-one -one mm. than w with mm. a group of other people. And so mm -hmm. I suppose it goes back to thinking, yeah. what's my research question? What's yeah. the right way for me to get data from the people who I've identified as yeah. useful to me? Yes. It's nice if you've got a topic that perhaps you could look at different groups across different ages. You've got a, a research question, you're like, well, how is that with a younger group versus an older group, or a, a group of uh, younger men versus older men, or um, women and men, that can work quite nicely. You can then look across the data more than you would do in a single case interview. Obviously, you can't move across the, the themes, across participants. You're looking at rich, deep data from one person. But a focus group, you can then look for similarities and differences across the uh, participants. Yeah, that's right. That reminds me, actually, uh, a student quite recently uh, did uh, his qualitative project with a focus group of, mm -hmm. of men. Yeah. And uh, they were discussing their experiences of seeking help for health issues or, you know, going for health advice. Mm -hmm. And, you know, talking around all the, you know, the different issues that perhaps um, in, uh, are obstacles for men to, to take themselves off to the GP and uh, go along with concerns about their health. I bet that was really interesting. Yes, that's right. And quite a lot of in, you know, interesting conversation got going between the men about you know, finding they had shared experiences that's and then it. some ways that they differed and so on. Yes. And from a practical point of view, you are getting a lot of data in one fell swoop, so to speak. You know, you might have six to eight participants in your focus group. You might have a focus group for an hour and perhaps an hour and a half depends, but um, it would take you a lot longer to gather that data if you were doing eight individual interviews, wouldn't it? Well, that's right, yes, mm. and you know, in a way, it's the data that it's all about, mm. isn't it? Yeah. And so um, maybe it's worth a little reflection about what makes good data. Oh, good. Yeah, let's do that. <laughs>